Geralt is hitting the town tomorrow with a fresh new look and some shiny new content. So today to celebrate, we're going to go through a ton of tips and tricks for new and returning players to The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Wait, what? I'm just goofing. New boot goofing. Uh, let's go. Let me know in the comments if you're Team Triss or Team Yen. So we'll start with some exploration-y tip things or like miscellaneous tips, I guess, things that didn't fit in any, any other category. We'll start with looting everything. And like when I say everything, I mean like literally everything, everything in anyone's house or anything that you can find. Not only will you find a lot of crafting materials, when you're out in the world, you should be picking up any flowers and knickknacky things that you do see for all of the alchemy formulas as well. Pretty much everything you find in the world will either be turned into some sort of a crafting item or alchemy item, which we'll talk about when we get into crafting and alchemy specifically, but you want to make sure you've got as many of these as possible. And alchemy and crafting items, they're raw materials once you break down the junk item into crafting components. They don't have any weight, so you can carry an unlimited amount of these, but you do need to strike that balance of just being careful of your weight because, you know, Geralt can only carry a certain amount of things, but if you are struggling with that, then start dismantling things. But just grab everything because not only can you sell it, it's really valuable for crafting and alchemy. Places of power not only give a temporary stat boost, they also give you an ability point which is great if you are trying to learn new skills and level yourself up you can enhance your weapon or armor at armor tables and grindstones and you also need to be mindful of the repair of these as well so when items do start to break down even before they show the little icon on the screen you will need to repair them to maximize the amount of damage that they do do the best way to do this really is through repair kits as it's cheaper than actually getting like blacksmiths to repair things for you and you can buy repair kits from most vendors and you can even craft your own once you do get the crafting recipes as well. In every new town that you do get to, make sure you check the notice boards for new quests as well as adding icons to your map. Sometimes they'll add new question marks to your map for you to go and explore. Upgrading Roach is also as important as upgrading Gerald. Roach can upgrade your saddlebags, which will increase your inventory weight. Blinders will increase the horse's fear level, so how fearful Roach is when there are enemies nearby. And the saddle increases Roach's stamina, which is mainly used in horse races, but is beneficial in other things as well. And trophies can give like different passive bonuses that could be anything from experience to just like other stat bonuses as well. The horse races are a good way to get some of these like saddlebags and other horse item rewards. However, you can get the Nilfgaard gear from the Crow's Perch vendor, which is probably the best at the early stages of the game Then you can just go and grab and buy those. You don't have to do anything for them. So absolutely go and do that. So you can upgrade Roach pretty early. And the main thing is the inventory rate, to be honest. While you are on Roach, if you stick to the roads, you will gallop indefinitely so you can keep that maximum speed. And Geralt, will like auto steer for you so you don't really have to do anything in those regards meditating is absolutely well worth doing one thing for the time of day so you can actually get to vendors but also it will replenish all of your potions in your inventory if you have got the alkahest in your inventory and on the normal difficulties it also refills your health so you don't have to worry about that on the higher difficulties the only way to restore your health is through like food and water those kind of things there is a great skill that will benefit this called gourmet which will mean that eating and drinking will increase your vitality for 20 minutes if you are playing on those higher difficulties is absolutely grab gourmet for that specific reason so food and drink last much longer and you can replenish your health much better you can replenish your health from potions as well but you do have a limited amount of potions speaking of those potions using them increases your toxicity which is that little bar underneath your health bar if you do max this out you will start to lose health so be careful of that however if you use white honey it will reset your toxicity and remove any of the potion effects so you can change the potions that you do have active at any one time and once you've got to valen and met kara mitts you do meet her as part of the main story she will eventually give you some side quests. Doing those side quests you absolutely should do as soon as possible because you will get the magic lamp which unlocks some secret locations for you later on and some different unique interactions in some quests. So make sure you do create your best side quests once you do get them. Let's discuss making money as all good witches always need to make money. Doing secondary quests and witcher contracts are both great ways to get rewards and get cash in the early stages of the game because you will definitely struggle with money in the beginning of the game. You need money for like everything in terms of crafting and all that kind of stuff in this game. Selling items won't make make you heaps of money, but it does add up over time. So make sure you are picking up everything from enemies and just like selling them. When you do sell things to different vendors, if you sell them to vendors that are specific to that item, you will get a little bit more. Say for example, blacksmiths will pay more for swords, armorers pay more for armor, innkeepers for food, general merchants will pay more for junk, that kind of stuff. Smugglers, cages and guarded treasures are also great to find those kind of an items and different things that you can sell to make currencies. And there are multiple currencies in The Witcher 3. So for the most part, you only use 
use crowns. Crowns is the currency that you use. However, you'll pick up orins and florins just from different items and things in the world. And if you go to Vivaldi's bank in Novigrad, you can actually exchange the orins and florins just for the straight crowns so you can actually use them. You probably won't even realize how many orins and florins you are carrying if you just go there and then hit the button. You'll just get like a ton of crowns that you can use in other ways. Crafting is a big part of Geralt's journey and the best gear in the game is the Witcher gear, which you can only get from crafting itself. And it's absolutely critical to do, especially on the higher difficulties. Now for the crafting menu itself, you can only craft at like blacksmiths and armorers. They will only allow you to craft like a blacksmith for like swords and weapons, that kind of stuff and armor for armor, that sort of things. When you are crafting and you're looking in the items and the actual resource cost involved, they will cost resource as well as gold. For resources, before you actually just buy them off the vendor, you may as well look into the dismantling menu as a lot of that junk that you've been picking up, you can typically dismantle it into crafting components that you can then use in these crafting different menus. And if you do use some of these items or even dismantle them into different crafting components, you might be able to actually just craft the item that you do need, like a plate or you know some kind of iron ingot rather than actually just buying that to save yourself those extra coins. But you really should be doing this and actually crafting gear as it's definitely the best gear you can get, especially the Witcher gear, which eventually you'll get those treasure hunts to be able to go and find them out in the world. They are absolutely well worth doing. Alchemy is another thing that is really critical to Geralt's journey and absolutely well worth doing. It allows you to create oils for your weapons, which just give you like straight damage increases if you use the oils onto the right enemies, as well as bombs, which can be thrown at enemies for specific effects and potions, which can be used to improve your combat abilities as Geralt. Now, the important thing here firstly is the beastiary. So when you're looking for monsters, you want to find out what they're actually vulnerable against. And this can be signs or potions or oils, what have you. You want to make sure that you're applying these specific potions or oils to your weapons based on the beast that you're actually trying to fight so that you can get those stat increases as well. And in a lot of cases, in the same way as crafting, you're going to need to make those oils or bombs or potions, or whatever it is, in the alchemy menu. You don't need a vendor in order to do this. You can do this as long as you're not in combat. You can create oils and what have you, but you will need to make sure that you do have those requirements for the items that you do need. And for the most part, they just come from the different flowers and things that you find throughout the world, as well as different herbalists, which are a great way to get some of these alchemical different items and crafting components, which you will find throughout the world. So familiarize yourself with the bestiary so you know what oil you need to put onto your weapons. You can just get that damage increase straight up and then use the potions or the signs that are specific to that encounter so you can get those extra bonuses as well. Speaking of those signs, let's just cover them quickly so we know what each one does. Ard is like a force push sign that can be used to break things in the world to allow you to access like secret areas or just like push enemies over. Axie is used to stun enemies as well as if you get the upgrades, you can make enemies fight for your side. And it's also used in conversations. In some scenarios, you could use Axie to get things to happen specifically for you. It's well worth upgrading for that reason as well. Yerdon is a slow trap on the ground in like the area around you. It is absolutely perfect to be used against wraiths and certain enemies that'll slow enemies inside that kind of area so you can actually attack them much better. Well worth familiarizing yourself with that for those types of enemies. Igni is the fire sign, which will allow you to cast like fire around you, or as you get the upgraded, you can basically just flamethrower from your hand. And Quen, which is my favorite, and the defensive sign, which everyone should be using, and especially on the higher difficulties. Initially, just the normal cast of this will allow you to have like a protective barrier around yourself, but eventually you can upgrade this so that the barrier will heal you and do other things as well. Quen is a fantastic skill to use, and it's also worth pointing out that if you want to set Quen on yourself, you can do that before starting a combat encounter, so you've got that effect active as if it's like a free sign cast, as signs don't really cost anything outside of combat. Your stamina will like immediately regen. And then once you're in combat, you can then like cast something else or even just recast Quen once it does get removed from the enemy. So you can cast things for free in that way. And that is basically all the general stuff you need to know to get back into The Witcher 3. I will have some videos coming out for the new content that has been added once we do have access to it. I might also do some other tips and tricks and different kind of videos as well if you're interested. So let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza and I hope you have a great day.